Hello, I'm Matthew Bengtson, concert pianist and assistant professor of piano literature at the University of Michigan School of Music, Theater, and Dance, where I teach piano, forte piano, as well as courses and seminars in piano literature. The best modern pianos of today offer a rich and powerful tone suitable for taking on the full resources of a symphony orchestra. In addition to this wonderful richness and power, modern pianos also offer a very stable action that's much easier to maintain and regulate than it ever was in the past. Most of us pianists today, especially if we have access to such a fine instrument as this, just feel fortunate and we're not always motivated to explore past traditions of piano design. There are some features of old pianos that have been mostly lost in modern pianos especially with Viennese instruments of the early 19th century. Two features of those kinds of instruments that certainly informed the music uh, that composers wrote for them were the feathery lightness of the touch and the possibility to make extreme changes of dynamics and color. It's only very recently that a modern piano manufacturer has reintroduced some of these features that a pianist would have expected to find in early 19th century Vienna and beyond. I applaud the Steingraber und Zona firm for introducing the Sordino and the Mozart rail into this Model E272 concert grand. Thanks to these two innovations, I have here at my fingertips not only an exquisite modern piano, but also the possibility to introduce some of these sounds and touches that seem to have been lost. This is what Mozart would sound like with an ordinary key dip without the Mozart rail. And then with the Mozart rail engaged. A modern piano action is very effective supporting the player lifting heavy hammers at high velocities in order to generate that rich and powerful sound. But the player's technique has to be adjusted in order to accommodate that setup. Over a hundred years ago, the great pianist Alfred Cortot was helping pianists learn how to play well on instruments that were not quite as heavy. He emphasized finger technique both uh, the precision and independence of fingers as the way to manipulate the action. Nowadays, pianists are usually taught how to use arm weight and wrist rotation in part in order to overcome the inertia of a heavier key. If the piano action is too heavy, the pianist's playing can sound labored, meaning that it's too loud and too thumpy. There's too many false accents where they're not intended. I find this kind of thing in students who practice on pianos at home that are too heavy. In my opinion, the action of many modern pianos is too heavy in order to execute masterworks of the past in the manner that the composers intended, especially when they're asking for a feeling of feathery lightness 
to be playing with just the finger. This is especially true in the case of Mozart, for whom the mechanism, the Mozart rail, was named. Even romantic pianos of the early 19th century permitted a lighter touch more controlled by the fingers than those of today. French pianos of the late 19th and early 20th centuries could be quite light to the touch. Even if you don't have an opportunity to play one, you can tell this just by looking at the music, which is clearly intended to be played with lightness, suppleness, and ease. The availability of this Mozart rail mechanism enables the pianist to use a finger-controlled technique that, from my experience playing early pianos, is historically well-grounded. But leaving that aside, it gives the pianist technical possibilities that are just plain fun to use. One of the wonderful features of a modern piano is the una corda pedal. That's the left pedal here, which shifts the action mechanism to the right and enables you to play on a softer part of the hammer. All my pianist friends and colleagues love this device and we all use it frequently. However, if you went to early 19th century Vienna, you'd find lots and lots of pedals under the piano. Of course, there was always a damper pedal, we can't play without that, and there would be shift pedals, sometimes different kinds of shift pedals, and most especially, there was what we called a moderator pedal or a sordino which would put a layer of felt between the hammers and the strings. Playing a 19th century romantic Viennese piano, 
Pianists can make the kinds of sounds and colors that they've never experienced. They're always captivated by these new possibilities. At last, Steingraber has reintroduced this mechanism with what it calls the Sordino pedal, which is this device here, which brings, again, a layer of felt in between the hammers and the strings, making possible a very soft and ghostly sound. This is perhaps the aspect of old pianos that's most lost today that was well known to Franz Schubert, that unsurpassed storyteller in music, or Robert Schumann, that quintessential romantic, who surely would have reveled in these coloristic possibilities. These composers don't always call explicitly for a sordino or moderator pedal. However, their romantic character and sense of special ghostly atmospheres are a perfect match for the color of this sound. Since Viennese pianos at the time offered it, there's a clear basis for wanting to use the sordino sound in the music of Schubert, Schumann, Mendelssohn, or Beethoven. But even without a historical justification, an imaginative pianist is going to revel in the possibilities of contrasting the full piano sound, the unicorda, and the sordino. I'm going to wrap up this demonstration by playing for you some Debussy. <laughs> 